Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Hollywood Experience where we experience what other people experience kind of firsthand here. Um, just a few knocks and bruises sometimes are, <laughs> are not what they look like on screen and sometimes... Right. Uh, Pulling so. from every corner of Hollywood just to give everyone a taste of what goes on no matter what uh, field you might be interested in as part of the entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, you know, the funny thing about it is, I, I find, is that, you know, you've got things that work on screen and things that work in real life or don't work on screen and do work in real life or the vice versa. Right, exactly. You know? No, one thing that – an example of that, and this has very little to do uh, with uh, what we're talking about as far as martial arts, but there's those logs in Final Destination. You remember the the log truck in Final Destination 2 where they fell off and bounced and went through the car? When they tried real logs, they just slammed on the uh, slammed on the road and they didn't bounce and go through the car. So they're like, great, we have to CG some bouncing logs because – we can't get real logs to bounce like we want them to. So. Yeah, exactly. It's something it as simple work as that. Out the way you it's want. something as simple as that. You know, I mean, in the movie, I, I remember doing a uh, a sword experience, and you know, every sword experience that we do, we basically put a different theme to it. And we, I worked on a theme from Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do a black and white, and one of the tricks they used in that was a flag that uh, sat on the back of a, a truck that was um, supposed to fall off that he was supposed to pick up. Mm -hmm. Well, you could see, if you looked very, very carefully, two very small filaments attached to the flag, okay. which they obviously couldn't remove back in the 1920s because <laughs> yes, exactly. they didn't have that ability back then to remove right. things uh, post-effects. Right. But you could see it. So... Because a flag necessarily wouldn't fall off at the right time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and maybe it would fall off the way you wanted it to. Right. So, like you said, those logs that bounce are usually fake logs that are lighter. Because mm -hmm. when fa you're, you're right, when the log goes down, it goes, blonk. you know, a fake log, if it's lighter, will start bouncing everywhere, you know, and that's when it's, you know, gives you what you see in the movie. Without any more ado, let's uh, talk to Keith Cook, and then we'll be right back after the, after the, uh, the interview. All right, good morning. We're going from Sherman Oaks to Encino today, and I've got Keith Cook on the other side. It's like it's funny because you know we sat here and said, "I said, where are you?" I said, "Encino." And I'm in Sherman Oaks. <laughs> good morning, Keith. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, it's awesome. We, we were chatting just before uh, the show, and we started talking about one thing and another, and and then we kept talking. And I was like, "Wait a minute! If we don't, if we keep talking like this, we're going to end up forgetting what we said, and it won't be as interesting when we when we we we'll get on air." So yeah. You've had a you've had a, an amazing career. I mean, you've done martial arts, and actually, we were talking about sword just off off air for a little bit, and about movement, etc. And you started talking about energy and about what the what that was interesting to you about the different energy be between a, a punch and a kick. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, it's funny because you know, when, with martial artists, a lot of times they talk about chi or ki, you know, the the internal strength or energy and how it flows through your body and stuff. But, you know, I, I'm really more interested in kinetic energy, you know, and how you, how, how do you create energy through movement? And uh, uh, they actually describe a, you know, a, a, a kinetic chain, you know, with all the joints that go through your body and how the energy gets created through the movement of those joints. And, um, you know, like, for example, if you were doing a punch or whatever, that it could start way down at your foot and carry on through your body and out of your hand. And um, I got really fascinated when I saw when I see somebody like do the shot put or the uh, or the discus or something like that, where they're spinning wildly, it almost looks like out of control. And then right at that last moment, they get all that energy that they created to go in that one direction, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that is amazing to me, you know, especially the shot put, I think, because it, it, it comes from a circular energy into a linear one. And it just seems like they pick up speed, 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 and then just let it rip, you know? And um, so I, I get inspired by things like that. And I'm trying to, uh, I think, I think for martial artists like myself, you know, it's how do you teach people to be able to create that energy, you know, <clears throat> all the time when they're moving around and, uh, you know, dealing with somebody hitting back at them and stuff. And how do you, how do you, how do you become so uh, familiar with that uh, ability or that technique that it shows up for you just like that, just like that without thinking about it, you know? It's a bit like and walking I, really. I mean, there's a lot of the time I, you know, I, when I 
teach sword i mean as, as i talked to you before when we do the sword experience a lot of the time it's uh, people don't move their feet and i say well first of all you just disconnected part of your body from your top part of your body from the bottom and i said most of the stuff if you take a punch for instance a lot of it comes from the ground it doesn't come from your just your upper body that energy comes from the body you look at a boxer it comes from the ground and the hips move first yes. of all it comes to the front then it goes to the hips then it goes all of that and you're, it's exactly what you're talking about which is that energy almost comes down from the from the earth there's a lot of kinetic energy if you want to talk about it it's from the ground i think and, and my teachers always said to me the ground is your friend it's not it's, yeah. it's, well yeah i mean uh one of the main things that i i work on with people is footwork because uh you know i i got really into boxing for a lot of the same reasons you know i felt like boxers could punch so much harder than most martial artists you know mm -hmm. and 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 they could do it uh with more accuracy and frequency you know and and intensity and also could stand there in the midst of all that and remain calm you know because i always felt like i was standing away from somebody trying to kick them and stuff like that and uh, when I got in close, I felt like, <laughs> you know, like that mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. and can you imagine, you know, I'm sure you've thought about this back in the day when people fought with swords. I mean, you would have to be so calm, you know, you'd have to be so, uh, aware, accepting of, of your circumstances, you know, that this person could chop my head off at any moment, you know, so you can't be thinking about that, you know, but, uh, I, I felt like boxers, you know, you know, uh, when you're, I've, I've had this experience myself. Boxing is, it's, it's very intimate, you know, like, and when, when you're really present that things slow down and you can actually, True, yeah. you know, I couldn't see how they could duck these punches and then punch somebody right back, you know, when they're right in the pocket, how did they see that? You know? And, and then I started to realize as I boxed more and more, it started to happen in little flashes for, for myself. And I was like, this is amazing. This is brilliant. You know, I love this. Mm -hmm. And, um, do you think, I, I do you think, think it's because, fun. because you kind of get a, first of all, a spatial awareness uh, automatically, it's a subconscious, uh, awareness in that, in that space, as well as a body reaction It's like teaching a baby to, to walk, you know, and then run and then do kicks, etc. They have to have those steps that eventually become automatic for them. Do you think it's kind of the same type of thing? <clears throat> yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that we do or that, you know, is ha get people to experience, you know, uh, you know, because one of the things you have to get used to is, is getting hit, you know, getting hit and how to absorb and move on. And that's why, you know, that rotational thing that I was talking about, I think it's, it, you know, you see it in boxing, you don't just see it on offense, you see it on defense. And so, you know, like, like if you're checking a punch here and then throwing a hook back the other way. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, receiving and then sending it out but the 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 way that your body moves is very similar to how you can absorb some incoming and how you you send it back out you know and so we do a lot of things that develop that that kind of response you know being able to respond in the moment it's, it's very it's like developing a sensitivity to it and that's why you can't really worry about getting hit you know, because it takes you out of the present moment, you know, anytime that you're stressed about it or uh, trying to anticipate things or force things, I think it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't help your present moment awareness. In fact, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, whenever you're in judgment, you know, judging things as bad or, you know, dangerous or whatever, I think, uh, you know, boxing is dangerous and you have to realize that and accept it get to a level of acceptance of that. And you've got to do your homework, you know, so that you're used to the things that are going to happen and you just take them in stride, you know? You know, I yeah. kind of, I, I kind of, I, I, my son plays soccer, right? And and sometimes he comes up with teams which are um, bigger than him, better than them. And I and he's like, oh, I'm a, I said, well, no, it's, a lot of this is a mental state. Your brain, you, if you think before you go into anything, and it doesn't matter whether it's soccer, whether it's a fight, whatever, that this is dangerous or this is going to be, you're going to lose, you cannot think of going in there because half of it is mental. A lot yeah. of a lot a lot of professionals will go into games, etc. And the the coach is one famous coach, Jose Mourinho for Chelsea. He, he was a Portuguese coach who told his team, who was a third, they weren't going to win this this tournament, supposedly. 
And he said, if I get Manchester United, which I don't know if many of you know who that is, a big, big uh, soccer team. So if we get them, we need them. But they're the, they were the best team out there. He said, These, this is the team we want to draw. This is the team we want to draw. And they drew them. So by the time they drew them, their mental state was already in that, oh, we need to, we can, we can beat this team. Rather than going into it, oh my gosh, this is, this is a problem. And I think that, yeah. that runs around the whole, everything. You know, like like you're talking about about the martial arts, about the, anything you do, you, your mental state is half the battle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, my son actually plays professional baseball, and he, uh, you know, we went all through the little league together. I mean, it was a fantastic experience. But they use a, a term. It's it's like um, stay within yourself. You know, mm-hmm. and and I think part of that is usually when you're in judgment, it's almost like. It's almost like you're you're outside of yourself looking at the movie of yourself judging it somehow <laughs> and you can't you can't therefore be in the experience you know be present you know right. and in baseball just like the martial arts and you got that pitcher trying to fool you you know he he wants you to think he's throwing the fastball and he throws the curveball or you know whatever it may be their deception is a huge part of it and so you have to uh, be present enough to actually observe it as it's happening. And it right. doesn't seem possible, but they're actually watching the seams rotate, you know, on the ball. And, you know, I'm sure that that sword fighting was a lot like that, you know, for people back in the day, I can't imagine how they trained for it, you know, uh, but, uh, and there was probably a lot of people who weren't that good at it that were just hacking, you know, hackers yeah. or whatever, but yeah. they still fought, you know, were brave, you know, but um, it's, it's just uh you know, that present moment awareness thing is, uh, is huge. You know, it's, it's one of the things I, I uh, when we, as I told you, that all the, the different sort of experiences we've done, a lot of the time I take, put people into a meditation. And in the medita- I say meditation, it's really being present in the space. And I said, to, and, and what I make them do is I say, listen around you to all the things that you normally shut out. During the day, and this is very true in film, we go, we, sh- we shoot something in film, and all of a sudden, the little guy over in the corner that's dropped a pen, or the or the or the guy that moves in the background behind it, is an, a, is an, uh, a distraction for you because you're not now honed in to that one thing, which is the spatial awareness around you. Normally, we shut a lot of that out, right? Yeah. So that's what I think in sword fighting has to happen. Which you're ta- you're talking about being in that that area where there's so many people around you, I say, look, listen, be aware of the people around you so that, first of all, it keeps you safe in this particular genre here. But if you imagine yourself in battle and you've got people all around you, you've got to know where the other person is, where the sword is swinging from. You have to have a 360 type of uh, view of everything. I mean, when I was taught martial arts, that's what I was taught. I was taught it's not you know, one movement, this movement, this punch movement is not just a punch. It can be a throw because you're now moving your rotation, your body from behind. So you've got to think of a 360 exactly in, in, in what you're talking about, being in that space and being aware of everything around you. So I think it's and I think that also helps us in life because there's so many times, you know, you could go into a into a bar, into somebody and you're not totally aware of everything that's happening. And all of a sudden a fight turns out, somebody throws a glass and you get hit in the back of the head. You know, yeah. I was always so aware of that when I when I when I was younger, going to bars and stuff. Now I, I don't have as much time to do it, but, that, <laughs> but you know, of that stuff that was you know uh, kind of uh, apparent to me of the awareness of being in the space. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me ask you a question uh, before I get into all your martial art history and your film history, etc. Uh, um, you were talking before about um, the things that you're doing now, the training you're doing now. Where, where, what is it, and where is it that you're doing it? Well, um, I had a martial arts school for 27 years in Brentwood, um, and uh, with the pandemic and everything, we were closed for like a year and a half, and I decided not to not to reopen. I started teaching Zooms during that time. And uh, I really, I've always wanted to teach, you know, online or whatever. And so I thought this is a good opportunity to adjust to that because I'm not getting any younger. And, uh, you know, it's a big responsibility having a school. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to be 62 in September. And I want to- you don't look it. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You look like 50. You look great. You look great too, man. You, you look really good. So really, uh, I don't know, just 
energetic and just good. That's what but this is what we need. I, you know, my, I, I didn't want to, I'll tell, I'll, I'll say this in a second. You carry on what you were saying about your school. Okay. So, um, you know, I think I always wanted to, uh, be a martial arts teacher. And I was doing, uh, it was around the time of the first Mortal Kombat, uh, which was 1995. I opened the school in 1994 and I was already doing a lot of martial arts movies and stuff like that. But some, there was some, I felt like there was something missing, you know, in, in my life, you know, like, like just going from, you know, trying to get, you know, uh, an acting job and another acting job or whatever. It just, uh, you know, I, d I didn't feel fulfilled, you know, and I, I opened the school and, uh, it just, it kind of took me over, you know, and uh, I loved the thing of the discipline and the, the, the dedication and that, that you, you could help a person, you know, a, a, a child who came in there like really shy, you know, mm -hmm. and, and help them learn how to express themselves, not just physically, but sort of emotionally and spiritually, you yeah. know, like, like to how to commit to something and they get tougher, they get tougher, you know, and they sort of get addicted to getting good at things, you know, developing skill. And that's why I always like that word Kung Fu, that it's not, it's not, uh, it, it, it doesn't Hard mean work. martial arts. It means Hard to work. get good at something, you know, that, and, and it's also implies discipline, you know, that, right. that it took, takes discipline to get there, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and if somebody can learn that and then apply it in other areas of their life, which I think they do, you know, without even knowing it, you know, um, so you're there to sort of challenge people, you know, and, and, and yourself, you know, to learn and grow and uh, uh, evolve, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I'm, I'm grateful for that experience, you know, and um it wasn't, you know, I, I felt like it was tough. It was tough at times, you know, and, uh, but I stuck it out. And during that time I got into, I wanted to do fitness too. And so in the mornings I would usually teach two fitness classes um, during the week and then one on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, I, I started running boot camps um, over 20 years ago. Uh, 10 week boot camps to help people get in shape. And that was a, always a good way of, you know, getting new customers in, in the door and then they could bring their kids. And, uh, and I wanted to have a place for the moms to work out of the kids, you know, because you just have this, you know, really uh, you have this, uh, you know, student body and you can, you can recruit their families and stuff like that to, if you have enough programs and it takes a lot of work, but you know, I've, I've met so many great people, you know, over the years. And uh, uh, I've had people that were fitness customers for t over 20 years that are still doing it, you know. And um, that's how I got into this thing that I'm doing now. I do two things. Really, I do uh, kickboxing classes, um, which I teach three a week right now on live Zooms. And then I teach four classes a week in this other thing, which is a resistance band it's, it's like a gymnastics ring mm -hmm. that's attached to a tube that attaches to your foot. And that's the one where you, you know, since it's like that, you know, you can do a lot of different exercises mm -hmm. with it and it creates symmetry because we do one side, then we do the other side and then we do both sides and a lot of balancing. Like you were saying, I, I, I saw this during those, I, I think they sort of call them riots or whatever, you know, the black lives matter or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I saw this old man, he happened to be a white guy that was in his seventies and a cop kind of roughed him up and pushed him down and he hit his head. Yes. I remember seeing he went that. into the hospital. Yeah. And I was like, Oh man, did you see him trying to catch his balance? He was, he was pushed back and he was, he was sort of backing up fast and he just couldn't catch couldn't up case balance. Yes. Yeah. 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 And he, he fell on the back of his head. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, wow, I wonder if he was doing, you know, some kind of, you know, training, could he have caught his balance, you know? Mm. And, you know, because when people get older, a lot of times they fall and stuff. And this, I feel like this class that I do really addresses balance, posture, strength, 
and then kinetic energy, you mm -hmm. know, creating kinetic energy and becoming efficient at it. Um, it. It has as many rotational exercises in it as it does linear exercises because it has traditional things like shoulder presses and chest presses, but then it has uh, these things I call medicine balls and the other one is an archer. Right. Right. And yeah. those are rotational exercises that um, really develop a kind of deep strength in your core and uh, it, it addresses balance and posture because you can't, you can't create energy out of a rotation without good balance and posture, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and again, yeah, you know, I, I, I totally agree with you. And, it, and I think the interesting thing is, it, it, you know, I, I don't know from your martial arts history, when I was taught, you know, I was always taught that, you know, what you can do with an open hand, you can also do with a weapon. You know, the, you know, mm -hmm. when you do, like a knife attack, you know, you're yeah. still, I, I can still do a choily foot. A, a strike with this yeah. type of right so you can kind of apply it to the same thing so a lot of the stuff i see you talking about and doing is similar to what i'm actually having some of my fitness stuff which is exactly that rotational stuff you're talking about you know yeah. because in, in sword you have to rotate the same oh, type yeah. of the same type of thing you have to rotate you can't just do yes. the arms you have yes. to rotate the body and the hips so it's a very similar thing so the human body it, depending on what your 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 mind is to be able to to um, grasp the, the type of exercise that you do, whether it is open hands, whether it is with a sword, whether it is with a dumbbell, everybody has their different way of, of understanding it. But I still think the mechanics are all very much similar. They are. And, and I also feel like when you, you know, are able to achieve good me mechanics, really efficient, you know, technique, it's very satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's very satisfying to, to do it and then create it again and again and again, you know, and that's why I think those things, those principles, you know, of how you, you know, like you were saying, it's not a style. It's actually, you know, it's like truth. It's just the way that we're built, you know, people come up with the same, you know, if somebody's doing an exercise long enough, a, a intelligent person, they're going to come to the same conclusions on how you, create energy and stuff because it's physics, you know, it's, it's just the way it works, you know, and I think that we should be teaching those skills because Agreed. those are the ones that, like I said, they're satisfying and it's not what style you do. It's, it's, are you getting to the nitty gritty of things, you know? And well, well, you know that most martial arts start from a base. They start from a core foundation. And a lot of, I think of that foundation, you know, comes from health, not just necessarily about the martial aspect of it. It's yes. the it's the internal chi, we call it chi key, kinetic energy that you create as you create that movement. And I think the human body moves with uh, a lot of energy anyway. The thought process that we have to create a movement in our hands, we're thinking about it. It sends an energy to that hand and that muscle and says, move that finger. I think the same thing applies to everything that we do, that it, it we create that and if we put the wrong type of um uh, thought process or the wrong type of energy we don't have the ability to be as efficient as we can be in our re regular human being um uh, like the guy falling backwards if he'd had that that ability to, to to understand to maybe turn his body when he fell instead of moving backwards and and hitting his head he might have automatically turned because that's what his he'd been taught to do naturally and it becomes automatic after that point yeah yeah absolutely let me ask you you, I mean, you have a, a a great career 1987 the waco world champion in forms and weapons you were the 1985 black belt magazine competitor of the year how did you start your martial arts why did you start it i mean this is this is what I, uh, the first thing i want to you, you know you. uh i had uh gotten beat up when i was in sixth grade by a bully you know mm -hmm. i mean i got the shit beat out of me you know and didn't really uh I didn't defend myself at all. And I felt ashamed. It was in front of like my whole class because the teacher would leave the room every day to have a cigarette. And so this guy would pick on somebody every time. And I think it kind of deeply affected me, you know, where I wanted to be able to defend myself, you know? And I started first by getting a book on karate and started learning the kicks and stuff like that. And then, uh, later, uh, you know, found, became more serious about it and found a place, you know, 
uh, to, to actually take martial arts. And before that I had seen Bruce Lee, you know, and I, I got, I was like, man, I want to be like that, you know.